Hey, and welcome to the show. This show is brought to you by Patreon members like you. Thank you for being a Patreon member. As a Patreon member, you get a video of the podcast that we put out twice a month. Now, on with the show. Is that, is that what you're looking for, that one? Well, hey, hey, Mark, how you doing? Steve, what's going on? It's Monday, and that means that it's Monday, and the week, dang, it just jumps. I love it when it jumps like that. Yeah, no kidding. It's like, holy cow. Uh, what's the topic of the day? Well, we got this in. Uh, we've talked about this before. That's the Rialto. However, we have a, another one that we want to talk about, which is, well, hey, you know what? Why not? We'll get this to it in a minute. Um, Dean, please come help Adam finish my car. <laughs> Uh, it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna no look doubt. beautiful in there. What's yeah, no, yeah, it's definitely for sure. Um, what's up, players? Playa. Hey, from Massachusetts, been a while. Hey, guys, hey, Marty Dean. Oh my gosh, we were just talking about you, Marty. That must be why you're here. We were like, like the last person from out of town that we had on the show live was and was, Facebook on Facebook was you. Um, and I know I was like, man, it's it's been it's been weird not being able to have guests on the show. Yep, and he's the winner. He he was the last guy to be on the show. It's pretty scary. What's uh, up from Peru? Uh, jail audio or the kicker keys? I'm gonna go with the kicker keys. Yeah, that's not even a question. That's not even fair for the jail to be honest with you. Uh, it's pretty damn good. Homemade cheeseburger with caramel onions. So that was the other thing too. When I was telling you, I watched um, Gordon Ramsay doing mm-hmm. the grilling thing. Is he just kept talking about caramelized onions? Got to get the caramelized onions. Got to get that good caramelized onion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, and then there's way too much mayo. Okay, I don't know why anyone would put mayo on a hamburger. Hey, Alex, Alex Kamara. Hey, buddy. What could that possibly be? <laughs> mm, I know, right? It's pretty scary. Another one right here. Could it be, I don't know, the Rialto? Ooh, scary. Anyway, so we're going to be talking about that in a little bit. Um, it's one of the, the, the dreams of mine was is to be able to play with some uh, speakers, to test speakers yeah. other than in a car. And this guy is going to make it possible. Mm-hmm. And the really cool thing about it is it's two-channel audio, which is what we have in a car. Uh-huh. And being able to test two-channel audio is is exceptional. So we're, we're excited about being able to do that. Uh, and having the tools to do it makes it even more fun. So no mayo, right? No mayo on your burgers. I don't know. Dude, he, no so mayo. Gordon Ramsay was mayo. making this burger, and he put mayo on the bun on both sides. He then, did? Yeah, he put mayo on the bo- bottom of the bun, the top of the bun, and then he put it on the tomato. And I'm like, it's, and he's like, it should goo out the side. And I'm like, the only thing on a burger that should goo out the side is cheese. I will be like, are you insane? What are you doing? I'm going to go whole nine <laughs> yards on him. I'm going to be like, yeah. I'm going to do Bruce Willis whole yeah. nine yards when we talk about mayo. For those of you guys that have never seen that, that's the best scene in the movie. Uh, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill your friends. I'm gonna kill everybody you know. <laughs> okay, I don't want to think about that. Oh, what's up, what's going Ida? on? Hey, hi guys. Just asking for Ooh. SQ Sub Rockford T1, T1 or JL12 T3. Um, you're gonna say T1. Uh, uh, that's my personal. Yeah, he likes. The yeah, T1. I like the T1, but everybody knows that the JL make a really nice subwoofer. So, like Ada right here. He knows about JL. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people do. Chris, that sounds like a really spectacular system. Hey guys, brighten my day because it sucked. It's Monday, man. The likelihood of it not continuing to suck is thin. Mayo or mustard? Uh, Ooh, none. None. I don't like it. No, I'm not. I'm not a. The only. Okay. Thank so, you for your offer, but no. <laughs> no man, he's your donkey. <laughs> um, the only thing that I put mustard on are pretzels. Like okay, when I get the big, the big pretzel, it's the yeah. only thing in my life that can do mustard. No, 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 no. Uh, no mayo no, doesn't me. belong on a burger. Exactly, right? I, and I, like, not, mayo doesn't belong on anything in my mind. I mean, I, <laughs> I just, I can't, I can't eat the stuff. I don't no, like you it. Can. Just, you can, you can. It's just like, no, you know, it, I don't eat it. I don't, oh, oh, okay. You know, deviled eggs, maybe. 
But yeah. What's up, Luis? I know we're not talking about Carstera. I'm sorry. Just, I'm from Portugal. You know, every now and then, you got to start the show off on the right foot, or the wrong foot. I, I don't know. It's a Monday. Whatever foot you you. And want. we're working on another F-115. For those of you Shocking. keeping track at home, that's the third one in a row that we're working on. So whoopee! What's up, Clint? Ah, uh, the weekend was good. Yeah. Um, it was nice to have that extra day off. Didn't get anything accomplished. Horseradish. You would say that. But I'm gonna, okay. So I'm more of a wasabi guy than a horseradish. Ugh, I love, I love, dude. I love wasabi. I Ooh. love that. Like, because remember, we were talking about. You yeah. know, wasabi isn't real in the United States. It's fake. It's just pulverized horseradish. You know. So, but you know that burn goes this way up into here, whereas yeah. your stuff goes this way down into there. Oh, and all the yeah. way here, and so then come back. I, down. I yeah. like that. Like when I take a sushi and put a glob of wasabi on it, and it just like you you you, you got to close your eyes because it hurts mm-hmm. so bad. It's like your sinuses are just like, oh my yeah. god, and you're just going. And, and they always laugh at me, the girls, because I'm over there and I'm like, it's not just coming down my face as I'm eating the sushi. And they're like, how are you even enjoying this? And I'm like, I don't know. I just like it. It's, I don't even care what. And the funny thing, I think I like the wasabi mix more than the sushi because most of the time I can't even taste the sushi. Yeah. And this show is brought to you by the kitchen of Dean and Fernando. <laughs> Right? And also, Audio Control, makers of fun home audio and car audio products. For those of you that want to get something cool for your home, pick up the two-channel Rialto. You know what? Since we've talked about the Rialto enough and we've really gotten nowhere in this show in the past seven minutes, so uh, one of the things we're working on with Audio Control, of course, is uh, being able to introduce you guys to more of the line. We talk about the car audio stuff all the time. Mm-hmm. But once you guys, like, two-channel audio is, is what you're really about. Oh, let's talk about Mexican foods. Tacos. Ooh. Tacos or die. Tacos or die, man. Now Ch- you got me. Chonga. Oh, Hieros. One dollar. Sopes. Oh, chicken sopes. sopes. He turned me on to sopes. Totally yeah. love them. Anyways, back to this. Yeah. A lot of you guys are into two-channel audio. In, in, like, you would love to have a two-channel audio in your system. Get a nice set of monitors. Maybe a subwoofer in the corner. And that's what the Rialto 600 is for. Is that it allows you to have... This cool compact amplifier, two channels, 100 watts at 8 ohms, 200 watts at 2 ohms, preamp level, bridge mono, it's, a, it's got a whole bunch of source, a whole bunch of stuff, um, and it's compact in size, and it comes in this color or that color, and it just so happens we've showed you this color before, yep. but it wouldn't be the same if we didn't have both, and so we have the next one, which is this guy here. Now. It comes with a cool remote control, which we will be using as we sit back in these chairs and we listen to our system play out and do all the cool stuff that it will do. Well, that's a nice place to have that, but look at this. Oh my, dude. All right, so as you can see, grab the camera. Let me turn on that camera. Um, and once you see the back of this thing, they, they do not play around. I mean, look at these terminals. These things are insane. I mean. All you guys can appreciate cool things. We got our Tosh link, go over here to the side. This right, there you go. You got our Tosh link inputs here. So if you got one of those cool portable, scoop back just an inch. If you got one of those cool portable uh, DAC players, you can plug it right into here. If you're like me and you have cool headphones, well, it, it, it'll, it's made for headphones. You, see, yeah. you got the cool headphone light right there. It's got dust in it. Um, but the headphone goes but the headphone right here back. and this, right? Does it? No, hold yeah, on. Right there. Oh, IR in, IR out. That's cool. So you can put it inside of something if you right want there, to. Right headphone. You see? Oh, yeah, headphone jack right there. It so like it's an, an eighth alien. inch headphone. Um, you have your subwoofer output here. So you can take it off. Obviously, it'll do 110. It'll do 110 or 120. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. So you got to switch. I'm sorry, 110 or 220. So you have a switch here. No, and 110 and no, 120. 120. No, 110 or 220. Oh, so yeah, yeah, it yeah. depends sorry. where you live. Yeah, if you. Yeah. Um, you have a high pass crossover built into it. Mm-hmm. So if you are running an active subwoofer, you can flick the little dip switches over here to the side. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. So there again, I'm not I'm not the most knowledgeable home audio guy, but I do have a really badass home stereo, and these guys make really badass home stereo well, stuff. Now that you have that. So. Please. We okay. want, we wanted to stack no, them on no, top no. one. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. No, I was gonna just leave them there, stacked on top of one another. Oh, you're gonna just leave them just right there. Right here. All right, uh, let's do it the other way because you know, I don't know. You gotta gotta be politically correct. Just saying. Um. <laughs> anyways, okay. so sure. these 
you know, we're gonna have a lot of fun with these and I really look forward to having that. Uh, my question got deleted. I'm sorry, well, Jeremy, ask it again and then it won't get deleted because we don't have the ability to delete any questions. No, I can't our... delete any questions, man. No, interesting. Unless if you actually post something bad. Look maybe? at Bobby's new picture. Wow, Bobby, that's crazy. Oh, Bobby. Um, anyways. Yeah. So, all right. I'm taking my mouse away. Jeremy? Jeremy say that? Yeah. Jeremy. Okay, no, I think I have it. You uh, have it? Jeremy say, um, I once took a large scoop of what I thought was an avocado. Oh, it was wasabi? I added a whole scoop of my mouth with a chunk of steak and wasabi. Yes. That was so that wasabi. was Maynard. Maynard in Cars 2, I think. Yeah. You didn't see Cars 2? Mm -mm. You haven't seen Cars 2. You have a I son that Cartoons. loves Cars 2. Well, Mater takes a whole thing. He thinks it's pistachio ice cream. Hmm. And it's wasabi. And the guy's like, no, wasabi. He goes, oh, that looks like pistachio. Boom. No, wasabi. Yeah, whatever. Y'all got some terrible pistachio <laughs> ice cream here. <laughs> I had pistachio ice cream this weekend, as a matter of fact. Really? Yeah, and the girls were... Haley, dude, Haley says, she goes, we'll get to car stereo questions in a minute. I know we're 11 minutes in. Just, just give me a Haley goes, I can't believe you wasted your one opportunity to have ice cream on pistachio. What is wrong with you? I'm like... That's just it, good. It's not like it's my last meal, I hope, yeah. but I mean, I, I like, <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. Uh, is there a disadvantage to the sub output section of a channel amplifier versus standard sub amp? I keep hearing people say you need to separate your power for your sub, but they can't explain why. Because there is no reason for it. All right. If you buy a five channel amplifier, here are the rules to buying a five channel amplifier. The first thing when you're considering buying a five channel amplifier is what are you going to be doing, what are you gonna be powering, I should say, with that five, the fifth channel. Jeez, oh man. What are you gonna be powering with that fifth channel? So for example, in this car, you got the Q-Class 1005. Uh, it has four to 500 watts, basically, of sub-channel. We're gonna power two 10 inch woofers with it, those particular 10 inch woofers, that amount of power, it's going to play fine. Mm -hmm. However, let's say we were doing some Rockford T1 uh, subwoofers, uh, or we're going in a car where they're gonna put like two P312s or two big 12s, two full size magnet 12s, well then that 500 watts probably wouldn't be enough. At that case, we would want to look into going with two separate amplifiers. So when I sell someone a five channel amplifier, it's will the fifth channel have enough to do what we want to do for subwoofer if it does go for it there's no reason not to it's a much more efficient way to put amplifiers in your car it's one amplifier it's one power wire it's a win-win all the way around i'm a big fan of five channel amplifiers love them to pieces can't wait for audio control to come out with their five channel amplifier which is getting closer day by day and it's getting scary it's close so That'll make things really nice. Right now though, um, because we don't have their big five channel amp, uh, we do a combination of the LC, four, or I'm sorry, the, the 4.800 and the 1.800. Because most of the times we're doing those, we want that like 900 watts for subwoofer. So that's where you wanna break the two apart. There's, there's no reason for it though, other than I want more power than this fifth channel is giving me. All right. Um I don't know if you want to. Oh, there you go. That's Anthony. What's up, Anthony? I run a five channel. Love it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, our go-to amplifiers are always five channels. I mean, if we can put a five channel in and accomplish something, I would much rather do that. For one, uh, it saves you money because you only have to buy one power wire kit. Uh, there's less labor involved. It's just a win-win all the way around. All right. I need your advice. I bought a seal box for my crew cab Tundra with a pair of Rockford Punch P2 tents powered by the Kenwood 901.5 and an epicenter. Mm. The cubic feet is 1.89, hot polyfill, but it doesn't get in a, like a good base. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know what good base is, so... It's, They're like okay. I mean, it's a crew max. Um, crew max you actually, truck. Yeah, the, the the tundra, the big one. Um, we put two T one shallow in that truck. Underneath the seat. Underneath the seat. Which truck is it? 
the Crew Max, the, the Toyota. Toyota we Tundra. Go, no, they go behind the seat. No, 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 on the bottom. The Tundra goes behind the seat. N not this one. The Crew Max is yeah, different? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Cause one... Because that's that one that has that really shallow underneath the seat thing. You're thinking of the Nissan. No. No, that was a Tundra. Well, yeah, but it depends on the and year, Because most oh, right. of the time we go two P312s behind the seat in right. the sealed box. If it's the one where the seat folds up and it's like this low, you know, it has like that raised area. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. That one, there's no room there, so we just go two P312s behind the in seat. The back, yeah. And that sounds great. I mean, mm -hmm. we always have good success with that. I don't know. That's just my I don't know my what mind. year it is. Um, I knew it was a PDX, Anthony. The PDX uh, five channel is an exceptional uh, Toyota Tundra double cab. Yeah, uh, is Morel still releasing an anniversary amplifier? Yes, they are still releasing it, but because of everything that's going on in the world, it is going to take a minute before it comes out. So it's it's still going to come out, mm -hmm. but I don't. I th yeah, hold tight. All right. I think I think we have some announcements from them next month, or yeah, next month or September. Yeah, I think I think it's at the end of September or the beginning of September, somewhere in that range. I think we have some announcements coming. All right, uh, can I use a DSR one high level into a 2017 GMC Sierra with both system? No, without getting an amp pro. No, also no, and that's a big no. What year? I said 2017. Oh no, it's, an it's not no no it's not no DSR one is a four channel input. You have to run the Ant Pro. There's there's no there's no. The only other way to run an Ant Pro is to make it sound totally terrible and do some summing and stuff like that, which you would never do in that car because it's the Bose system and yeah. you don't you don't sum that car. That would be that would be pointless. Ant Pro into the DSR one. We do it all the time. Uh, I think we did it in our video. Mm -hmm. It's spectacular. It sounds wonderful. I know it's more money, but hey, it's just what it is. You know, it's if you want it to sound good, you gotta gotta kind of. Unfortunately, that's one of those things you just gotta do. There's there's no other way to do it. Uh, someone asked as far as the Ant Pro goes in their F150, what should I set it for? My classic amplifiers. You'd probably want to set it to the four volt setting and not the five volt setting. Uh, any it, any time we do on the D, on the amp pros, there's a switch for four volts or five volts of input. Most of the time, you're going to leave it in five volts. Uh, if you're doing a DSR one, I recommend putting it to four volts. And then also, if you're doing anything Alpine, I also recommend putting it in four volts because those it just sounds better. Uh, does the MTF one work on amplified or non-amplified Ford systems? It depends on the year. Yes. But yes, it will work. It depends on the year. If you're gonna go into the new truck with the Bang & Olsen system, then you have to bypass the factory amplifier. On the Sony system, it will integrate. Yeah. By Bose, get hosed. Nice, Robert, that's a good one. When are you guys going to in start selling sound deadening material? Uh, the sound, you mean like the Ground Zero stuff? If you want it, you can give Paul a call. He'll ship it out to you. So it's 727-216-6170. Terry Green, Access DSP. May have one for the car. It's a lot cheaper. Access DSP may have one for the car, and it will probably be cheaper. But I would still not use it. Because I like Amp Pros. But, you know, it's all right. It's all right. It happens. Yeah. All right. Can I sing? Can a single sub box have a 12-inch sub with 32 hertz tune with ported side and the 12 seal 42 hertz tune side to gig wider range of bass? I have no idea what you're asking me. I don't. I would have skipped that one. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, if you can't read it, I mean, if it can't, if it doesn't make sense when you read it, just, just, just move on. I mean, I mean, a bigger, what are we asking? If the bigger port, bigger hole? I mean, okay, so it's, can a single cell box have a 12 inch and tune at 32 hertz? Yes. Right? Yes. Now, a 12 seal. Yes. 42 hertz tune. You're not tuning a seal box, but okay. Technically, I mean, you're really not. I mean, you're just getting the airspace to I mean, get a wider range. You will get a wider range with a, with a sealed box. Um, the size of the box obviously is going to change the way it sounds naturally. That's kind of, I guess, would be the tune, as it were. 
But so here, here's my here's my explanation on how box design works. As far as I've tried to make it as, as simple as possible. Um, if sound, so if this is the spectrum of if this is the frequency response, meaning from 20 to 20, okay, and you have a balloon, and, it, and it's it's round. So think of this big round balloon. It's so tall. It's so wide. Uh, if you do a, and this is the volume you get out of it, and this is the, the width, meaning how much your frequency response is. So if you grab a sealed box, your frequency response is going to be wider, but not as loud. Okay, so you get, you get a lot of frequency range, but you don't get necessarily the volume. And that's considering all things equal, meaning the same amount of power and the same subwoofer. Obviously, if you go sealed box with a lot of power, then you will get louder. That's some way to compensate for that. But we're, we're same 500 watts, same single subwoofer. This is what we can get out of it. This is all the motor structure will do. Seal box, mm -hmm. lots of frequency response, not necessarily great volume. Okay. Now, port the box, squeeze this frequency response in, and when you squeeze that frequency response in, you get more volume. Okay, now depending on where the port is, is going to tell you where on that frequency chart it's going to be and where that volume is going to happen. And then you take like a bandpass enclosure, squeeze it in even more, but now you get even more volume. And there again, depending on the port and the size of the box, that is going to vary in where that happens. So that, that's it in, in a basic nutshell. Okay, so. That was his question. The question is, can I have a one sub ported and one sub seal in the same box? I mean, you can technically do whatever you would like. However, the whole idea of subwoofers is to have them couple together, meaning have them join. You want your port to join with your subwoofer and it creates more volume. What you're trying to do is create more frequency range. The problem that you have is that if you don't get it perfect, you can have two different size waves happening at the same time, and then you're going to get cancellation. So if you've ever been to a beach where you have waves coming in, okay, because waves are all waves, it doesn't matter whether it's water or if it's sound, it's, it's, it's all acting the same way. If you have two waves coming in, all right, and they hit the shore at the same time, or they, they hit a point, one of two things happens. They either couple and get bigger or they hit each other and they go flat, meaning they don't put out any sound. So by having one sealed, one ported, depending on what's going on, they could couple and you may get extended frequency response, but more than likely what's gonna happen is because one is this volume and one is this volume and they're both playing, is eventually you're gonna get this and they're gonna cancel each other out. Unless they're far enough apart from one another, which they won't be in your car. So. All right. That's why you typically don't see that. Limited space, I want deep range of ported box and snap base of a seal. Not sure if they're... Okay. I mean, really, buy a, buy a sealed box and get an epicenter. That was what I was thinking. Like, yeah, buy a an epicenter, box, epicenter will, will actually... It'll do the same thing. All right. And then everyone will be happy. All right, saludos desde Mexico. Say, I just bought our Pioneer 2000 watt 5 channel amplifier with a Rock 4T1 like you guys did in the Hummer. What kind of subwoofer do you recommend? Eight inch. An eight inch subwoofer? Eight inch subwoofer. Okay, I'm gonna flat out tell you, I'm not a fan of eight inch subwoofers. We do have them, seal box, exactly. Um, I have the B2, eight yeah. inch, and for me it sounds sounds nice. But you have a nice small car. I have a small car. Now we're talking about a Hummer, I which think, is a really big car. Yeah. I think with a 10, with like a P310, You'll be fine. Uh, I think a ten would a be quarter. better. Yeah, yeah. Because you got to fill. Remember, you got a lot of air. You got to move. Yeah. You got to fill. A little eight in the far back corner of that is going to suck. And the reason why? Okay, so let's put it to you this way: in that Hummer, that Hummer has basically the same cabin size as a Tahoe, as an Escalade, as the, all those cars are all the same. When they first started making those cars, they were, subwoofer was in the back corner, either yeah. driver's passenger. They put the subwoofers in the back. And then they realized that it was too far back mm -hmm. for that little six or that little eight that went back there, and it wasn't eight inch at one point, and they moved it into the center console. So now you have a little five and a half in the center console, which puts out more bass 
than the one in the back. So you need something to fill that cab. An eight inch, unless you get a super eight inch woofer and a big enclosure, it's not gonna do it. Right. And there again, that big enclosure is the problem. So scale it down, you could do a 10. You could do a 12 in a small enclosure mm -hmm. that's gonna sound better than that eight and not take up a lot of room. You could also look at doing some of the down firing enclosures that like, you know, if you're worried about you don't want this big box taking up space in the back, you could do down firing. Do like maybe two tens down firing uh, back there. That way you can still set stuff on top of it and you mm -hmm. can fill the, fill the cab with sound. All right. A Sundown 8 would be good, but like I said, then you have that big box. Okay, cool. so my guess is you're going with an 8 is to save the room. So, but yeah, I mean... I have a... What, what? I have four A's that rock in a Hummer with Bill. We're talking yes. one. Four. I have four yes. eights too. I yeah. mean, we're not talking... F yeah. There again, he said one eight. And, yes. and, and the amplifier, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like a 500 watts for yeah. the sub that... I mean, put put enough small anything in a car and you'll yeah. fill in the void. I mean, four six and a half. I would I would do I mean, one ten. Four sixes. We have the box with two sixes over there. Yeah. That yeah. you know that we put in your car and it's 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 stupid. Yeah. You know how much yeah. space comes out of it. But there again, it, for the amount of space that there you go. people took up. It, uh, I'd actually just recommend the AW7. Check it out. Uh, over there, I think in Mexico jail is pretty good. So I still think you should do a ten. Yeah. <laughs> but do you get rear <laughs> But do you get rear fill, bro? <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. All right. Any words on the Kenwood is going to release up, the ten inch? August, September. September, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's I think it's late August, early September now. How do you determine the fuse size for a fuse holder? And if you tie fuse is to if you the, tie, the 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 fuse is too big that you need um so obviously the easiest way to do it is just go to the website and see what the current draw is on the amplifier if the amplifier doesn't have a fuse on it you could also use ohm's law to backwards add out you know what the recommend or what the power is uh and get your um your amperage draw from that um, I typically just go to the website and, and figure out, you know, let the manufacturer tell me what the amperage draw is. If you're doing just the one amp and it draws, let's say 60 amps of current, 60 amp fuse, 70 amp fuse underneath the hood is fine. It's there to protect the wire, not going to protect the amplifier at all. The only time that really matters is if you're there, there again. If the amplifier doesn't have a fuse externally, like on the side somewhere, then, my, then it should have some form of internal protection built into it. If it does, there again, you really don't need that fuse on a single amplifier in the back because it should be built into the, some, something should be built into the amplifier. If you're gonna do multiple amplifiers on the same power wire, that's when you need to worry about that. So in that case, like if you uh, caught us when we were talking about wiring up the, um, the amplifiers like it's like this one needed a 20 amp fuse this one needed a 16 amp fuse those two fuses are what went into it and then underneath the hood technically you'd only need an 80 amp fuse but we went up to 100 uh just because it, it's fine it's there again it's there to protect the wire not the amplifiers uh yeah um um, yeah, yeah, as far as you've been calling and asking for a, uh, an I amplifier guess. buy harness for a Titan, um, th the thing is, is when it comes to making a, a custom thing like that, we make those one off. Like, I don't take notes all the time, yeah. and I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know what it was. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know why he keeps, why he just doesn't say that to you, but that, that's really the problem is that I wouldn't even know where to begin. I don't know what the harness looks like. I don't no. have the pinout configuration for it. Um, we make them on a, on a per need basis when we yeah. have to here the car here, when we have yeah. the car sitting here we'll mm -hmm. make them you know if the car was here and you called it just the right time then I could make two that's fine but I don't know what I would need to make the harness right. so that's that's really what it comes down to if I've made it in a video like I know we have at some point um, there again it's I, in would, the video. I would have to go watch the video to figure out what it was because yeah I, I don't know. But yeah, I'm sorry. I just, yeah, it's just y'all made it in a video, but never mentioned the connector. I, you know, I'm pretty you, sure it's in it. 
I mean, if it's if it's the Titan, it's a GM harness. I just don't it's know which a, it, one it yeah, was. If and, I, it, and I think it is in the video, or it's listed in the comments below, because I know someone has asked that before. I went and looked it up at some point. Right. But it's a GM harness that we had to repin. Right. If it's that old Titan video. If it has the, the old Titan, the 911. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a GM harness. It's yes. like a 2003. Uh, 2003, yes. That's yeah, a 2003. And the BHO, yeah. 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 Oh, wow. 2003. And I think I had to use two of them to make the harness, if, if memory serves. But it doesn't always that well. Uh, what's the best amp? SOB speaker com for a 2011 Dodge Caravan. All right. Whoo, good question. Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do uh, you want to answer that? No, I have no idea. Okay. I, I have. I have this one. Hello, yeah. Dean. You are a hard man to get on the phone. Yes. I have a couple questions. What's the best way to ask you my questions? Um, try to get me on the phone. And um, here. Yeah, I, right. it, it, the thing is, is like right now, everyone in car audio world, thankfully, is, is busier than they could possibly be. Super busy. Um, and I have not had, I've, I've been working late almost every day for the past two weeks, so having this Saturday off was a really <laughs> a blessing in disguise. Just trying to get caught up with, I mean, th this car, we, we're already behind. I mean, oh, we yeah. just got it today and we're already behind. Um, it's just really hard right now. I know I apologize, but uh, it's just tough. It's just tough. It I mean, we do these yeah. shows, and that's that's really, it's no no good. Uh, right. Hold on, wait a minute. Do I need an LC6i 2019 yeah, Accord for an amp to highs or just high level with access T harness, uh, access harness? Um, if it has the, if you, if it just has the base model system, meaning no premium sound, then you can just do the Honda access harness into whatever you want for a high level to low level adapter. The only time you need, um, and now you, yeah, so no, you don't need the LC6i. So it's, there again, it just depends on what amplifier you're going with as far as if it's the base model Honda to what amp. Mm -hmm. um, it's four channels of output to what amp. So like most of the time when we use, when we design a system, we know we're gonna have to go high level then we pick an amplifier that has a really good high level built into it so I don't have to add extra boxes, especially in that car, because there's not a lot of room. So uh, I, I would get something with a good like 10 volts of input on it, uh, like kicker amplifiers, or, or any amplifier for that matter that has 10 volts of input. Uh, obviously all the audio control stuff. Yeah. Um, some shops are three months behind. Yeah. I know, yeah. yeah. I mean, we're, 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 booking, a few months behind. we're booking for August right now, yeah. so. Uh, I mean, I don't get me wrong. I I'm totally cool with it. I, I I hate standing around. I'm the one guy that's like I don't want to stand around. Yeah. I mean, we had to. Um, we did have one couple hours last week where I called like two or three people back. Yes. Um, he's got a list, and I just called people back and and, and talked to them. I don't know why you weren't on it. Uh, I do know why you weren't on it because his organization skills suck. But. Um, Anyways, uh, on the GM question, the GMC question, can I use the AMP Pro without the DSR-1? Yes. And add it later on? Of course. Yes, you can totally. There you go. Yes. It's a preamp. The, the AMP Pro gives you the preamp level output. So you get the six channel preamp level output. If, if you don't want to do time alignment, equalization, all that fun stuff now, it's totally cool. Uh, the nice thing is depending on whether you have the factory CD player or not, which you probably do if it has bows, because um, you can mount, we like to mount the DSR-1 up front because there's room, uh, but either way, it can go in the back, it can go in the front. The nice thing is if you can, you know, it's about yay big, if you do have a spot for it in the dash, then when you do decide to upgrade, uh, you just literally unplug the Amp Pro, plug in the DSR-1, run, uh, plug the uh, DSR-1 into the yeah. Amp Pro, and it's like, yay! Ah, it was we'll, we definitely let you know, Chris, as soon as we start selling the amp racks and the speaker adapters, that I don't think is going to be soon. Terry, I would totally call people back while I'm running in the evening. I love talking to people while I'm running. <laughs> the, the problem is, is that the wind in my headphone and the mic from the headphones typically is annoying. Um, but no, I, I call people all the time because most of the time when I'm running, like I've talked to Chris Bennett, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to Ada and Chris Bennett and uh, Mark um, while I'm running because that's when I think of the stuff 
and I'll be like, oh, and Joe uh, from Kicker, um, uh, you know, and they'll be like, are you running? I'm like, why? Because we can hear you breathing, and the, the noise is, the, I was like, I'm sorry, and you know, I got, then I'm trying to run like this, so the air, to, and it's like a real pain in the ass, but I don't know, I, I don't mind talking when I'm on the phone and running. All right, uh, I want to upgrade my speakers in my 2017 Honda Accord with the premium sound system. Can I just do the speakers, or should I add something for a better sound quality? I mean, those speakers, believe it or not, aren't really terrible. Mm -mm. They're not bad. It's Everything else is bad. So the, the, the premium sound in the Honda is all coming off of an amplifier that's like this big. Mm -hmm. And it's not made by a cool company that like has tech for making amplifiers that's that big. So it's just like a really bunch of IC power chips. So the door speakers, as we know, suck because there's not a lot to them. But yeah, okay. If you're looking to work yourself into this, by all means, replace the speakers. Um, you'll get a better sound. It's not going to get louder. It's just it's just going to change the way it sounds a little bit. Personally, I would replace everything and just call it a day. But I get it. Uh, it's really the mid bass that sucks in that car. The tweeter is is kind of lifeless though. So I don't know. I mean, we just try to pull it all out and go to town. Oh no, kidding. Oh, wow, that's a lot of questions. Dean, do you still have Morel Sub in your car? Ported or sealed? Uh, I still have the Morel Sub. It has never been put in a box, but no, it's it's it hasn't gone anywhere. <laughs> I need to have a box build. I need to get with um, fo uh, Frostbite and have them build me a box. Uh, I just I haven't had time to even deal with it yet. Um, what T-harness do you use for the Kenwood 600 DSP and AR and a charger with premium sound? Simple enough, uh, what you want to do for that is just head over to iData link and hold on, let me just do this. Yeah, let's go here. So if you go here to iData's webpage and you select amplifier replacement and then you select here, you, what is it, a Chrysler? Chrysler, mm. uh, yeah. Hang on. Uh, a Challenger. Yeah, so let's dodge. Okay. Dodge 2017, right? Yeah. Oh, he doesn't give me the year. We'll just say whatever. Model, Challenger, select trim, with factory, or what was that? Hold on. Yeah, good enough. Okay, come on, web page. So, anyways, what you're going to get is right here this, this information underneath the AR or underneath the DSR1 is going to tell you the harness that you need to buy. That's the easiest way to figure it out. Um, so according, I, I don't know what, you, I just put in a random year, so you're gonna want to check. Uh, but it's the CHR03, but it could be the ACDC, CHR03. ACDC? But, yep. Uh, All right, Dean. Yeah. Do you still have the Morel solving your oh, car? Oh, no, I answered that. Yeah, it never made it in. Yeah. Uh, would you recommend a good five channel? I was looking at the Memphis Audio amp any good. I have not done any work with Memphis in probably five or six years. Um, you know, if you're just looking for straight power five channel amplifier uh, on a reasonably price, I would check out the Kenwood uh, 901.5 is a great priced five channel amplifier that it is high res audio performance is phenomenal uh, and it's extremely reasonably priced. So. All right, I have a 2015 Toyota Highlander. I upgrade the Kenwood. I upgrade to the Kenwood DNX 995S. What would you recommend to do a simple replacement on the speakers? Kenwoods, just do the Kenwoods. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. the Kenwood has the Exelon six by nine components. Mm -hmm. They they they're phenomenal. I would just head over and get some Kenwood Exelons. Somebody say MTI acoustic boxes. Did they? Yeah. Oh, oh shoot. There you go. If you like the MTI acoustic boxes, right now we have a coupon code for you to get a discount. You can easily go to their website and choose your vehicle. There's a ton to choose from. So earlier we were talking about a Toyota Tacoma. We can go here, select the Toyota Tacoma, and we can do stage two under seat enclosure. Oh, this is a Titan. I grabbed the wrong one. 
Oh, Either that's way, beautiful title. Let's do that. We just did this one the other day. Yeah, yeah. Or no, I just quoted this one the other day. Oh, really? I don't even remember what I did. Uh, okay, so put it in Toyota. I keep going to oh, hold on Toyota double enclosure. So here you go. Give me that. Oh, it's loading. So here you go. Yeah, it's there behind the seat. Okay. So there you go. There's a JL behind the seat. And dude, that's a great price because it doesn't need to be custom because it's behind the seat. And you can't see it anyways. But we actually have a box like this that's made. And that's about what we pay for it. So yeah, you could definitely do that. Now the nice thing is, but you this can, is the Tacoma. That is the Tacoma. That's the Tacoma. We're talking about the the, the Tundra. Oh my gosh, dude. Anyways, you get the idea. <laughs> Pick your car. Oh, it is a Tacoma. Here's the Tundra right there. Yeah, all right. All right. Hey man, you gotta. I know what I'm doing. Make the. Well, it took me to the same, same spot. Same, same spot. I know how to use the web. Web. I, I promise. What do we got? I should have picked a Titan. I really like yeah. that Titan box. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there that's you it. Go. That's it. There so that's go. the one so, behind the seat. Okay. That's that's a good deal. And that's a buy ten, that right? Box. Yeah. I think we need to buy that like box that from now on. I'm gonna have to check the specs on that. All one. right. Either way, right now, if you decide you want to get a box made for your truck, we should have showed you one of the pretty ones. But you could save twenty percent using the discount code Save Twenty. How original is that, right? Ooh. Does that come with subs? You can buy it with the subs, but you not for that amount of money. You can talk to them, yeah. You saw those were two JL subwoofers in that box, right? They, yeah, we don't care. They, they, well, not only that, but I mean, come on. You, you know they cost more than that. Yeah, but oh, like... wow, yeah. it says Tundra in it. You can even see that. Yeah, That's yeah, cool. and the other one says Tacoma. But you have options. You can get it with JL, you can get it with Kicker, or you can get it with Ground Zero, and they do 10s or 12s. So, and yes, they will ship them with the woofers loaded for you if you want it. Yep. Can you explain how bi-amping works? and how to do it. Thank you. Ah, oh, that was a good one. Yeah, right there. Do I have a buy-up crossover? You need a crossover. I have mine. Okay. Do you need it? Yeah. Because I don't think those are... Oh, those might be, but hold on. Hold, please. Uh, that's what I've got, JL33. Great price. Yeah, for sure. Steamer 9 conductor wire 18 gauge. Is it safe to use? to connect four channel amp I want to tap in the harness behind the radio and run yeah we use it all the time it's perfectly fine for that all right so here we go we got a bi amp crossover perfect hey we got a second camera let's move these out of the way and let's talk about bi amping first if you want to buy amp um if you want to buy amp you have to have a bi amp crossover or you have to have speakers that you can disconnect the tweeter from the input of the speaker. Now, on this particular one, you have an input here, and it says tweeter, and it says woofer, yeah, tweeter and woofer. And if you're going to run it by amp, that means you'd run like a channel one and two here, channel, channel three and four here, and that would power out to the output side, which would be your woofer and your tweeter. And, and that's pretty much it. The whole idea is that I can take now a four channel amplifier, it's okay, you, you, you're making me right sick. There. You can take a four channel amplifier, connect it to this pair of speakers, and if you don't have uh, like a, a big DSP crossover or you don't have an amplifier that has a 10 time multiplier switch on it, because most of the time, if you're gonna go, let's say full active, you need to have something that can play up to 3200 hertz. Well, most high pass crossovers on amplifiers only go up to like 250, sometimes maybe 300. Uh, so a 10 times multiplier on the amplifier would give you the ability to go up. So like Alpine puts a 10 time multiplier switch on their PDX or their higher end amplifiers. I think the PDRs might even have them too now. Mm -hmm. um, in which case you could go full active. Well, if you just have a four channel amplifier, you can't do that. So with that, you can run it into here. It'll go through the passive crossover network and it will output. Now underneath here, you could see, oh, hold on. You can see like this right here is a switch, and that switch is for attenuating the tweeter between uh, zero and here. Could you lift that up? Just I mean, a little if bit? you put it from the top, I can't. You can I need see to see. It. No, I need to. No, you can't. So that that's oh. stop moving it. No, no, no. <laughs> just, just leave it right. right leave it right there. You leave, move. You just leave it right there. Over up. So you see these two there switches. So this one here is for attenuating the mid range, and this one here is for attenuating the woofer. So you can do some crossover action here. But because you now have them on four, a four channel amplifier, you can actually use the amplifier to control the gain, which is cool because when you're doing it full passive, that's when those switches become handy. 
On this particular crossover, I believe you can also flip the polarity of the tweeter. Yeah, you can. There's a switch on the other side here that allows you to. It's a shelf filter that allow you to flip the tweeter out of phase with the mid range, which is important because depending on how they're mounted in the car, whether they're on axis or off axis, and how close they are to the mid range, you might need to flip that to compensate for the fact that it's a 12 dB crossover Should network. Take it out. That's okay. I hope that helped. I need a funky Fernando fuse holder under the hood. Uh -huh. That's nice. Uh, why do you guys keep calling me out for putting fuses on my JL amps and under the hood when I'm running two amps in my truck? We do? Uh, saying I'm wasting money and time and possibly current on doing both. I don't remember calling you out on that, Chris. Um, I mean, if it's, if it, uh, put as many fuse holders in the car as you want. I mean, that's, that's fine. I mean, especially on a JL amp because JL is all internally protected. So if you're on, I mean, there's no reason not to, I mean, they need, if you're going to run one amp or two amps, I'm sorry, if you're going to run two amps in the back off one power wire and they're internally, uh, protected as we'll call it that's not a hundred percent protection it's like 98 percent 99 percent so there's 0.1 percent chance that that might not function and that's what the fuse holder is for for many years even now uh if we're going to be let's say in this f-150 we're putting one amp on or let's say we're going under the seat we'll run two power wires i don't care i'll put two fuse holders we do it all the time so whatever works um yeah it's all about that course today. <laughs> what is the length of an 8M eight eight screw that you all use? Uh, it's an M, I'm sorry, M, M8. M8. We use an M6. M6. So M it's an M5. M6 and it's an inch. Yeah. So for the license plates, it's a one inch M6. M8 would be huge. Uh, so what are the plans for the up and coming vacation? Going to the beach. <laughs> he doesn't even like the beach. I don't like the beach, but I'm still going. Um, we were going to go to Maui, but as everyone knows, that got canceled. Uh, will it be better to have a separate DSP, an amplifier, or an amp with a DSP built in? All right. I'm a big fan of amplifiers with DSP built in. However, like most things in life, there are limitations to the use of said things. So, for example... Uh, if you caught any of the Instagram footage we did last week of the F-150 we were working on, that went with the D61200 and an LC1.800. The reason why we chose that amplifier combination was is we were doing two-channel front stage active, rear fill, and a subwoofer. That particular combination works perfect for that system. Now, Audison also makes a Forza package for the F-150 that gives you eight channels so that you can do uh, one and two to the tweeters, three and four to the driver's mid, five and six to the passenger mid, seven and eight out to rear, and then it has an output for a subwoofer, or you can do um, one and two, three and four, five and six, combine seven and eight out to, let's say, a 10 inch driver. It really just depends on what you're trying to do, how many channels you need in, how many channels you need out, that's you just have to build the system a lot of people don't understand that process we know this because they'll they'll be like hey i want to put a dsr in this and do that and it's like it's four channels it, it that's four channels in eight channels out it's not going to do what you're trying to do mm -hmm. so you have to know what you're feeding it with and what's coming out now the one disadvantage to doing you know like if you want to go tosh link you have to find an amplifier combination. So like the fours that will do Tosh Link input, the audio control will not. Um, so if that's a, that's a deal breaker for you, then that's something to think about. Whereas most outboard DSPs have a Tosh Link adapter input. So uh, what? what size TechFlex do you use yeah, for four, four gauge? Or RCAs. Uh, RCAs is going to depend. A lot of the six channels we're going to use three quarters because we want it's got to go over. So like when you see us do the six channel RCA, that's a three quarter. Tech flex, um, and then for four gauge, it's typically three eighths or half inch. Just depends what we're feeling. If it's going to have a lot of bends in it, we'll go half inch because the half inch makes it a lot more flexible. If it's just a straight run up to the end of the hood, we'll go three eighths because it fits tighter and it mm -hmm. takes up less room in the floor sill. All right, uh, what adapters are you guys using to put an eight inch mid base on the front doors on a 2014 Silverado? Uh, we made some custom ones. 
long time ago. But yeah. that's it. We're, there's really nobody that makes one. Alpine had one, but I mean, yeah, we just make custom ones. Yep. It's a lot of fun. Woo. How can you cut flex loom without a hot knife? Cut it with scissors, take a lighter or a torch, and just kind of braise the top of it as you're, uh, when you're, you know, just do one of these things to the top of it. And then I take it to like a piece of wood and I tamp it, in, you know, tamp it down into the wood. And that seals those all nice and tight. Uh, if you look at the front of my, uh, hold on. If you look, sorry to pull your perfect framing away. It seals little black spots right there on the front. That is, sorry. Wow, man. I know, I know. That's I, perfect. I know, that is perfect. That looks super sexy, by the way. Um, that's for me taking flex loom and doing this because sometimes I'll be over here and I'll just grab like a run of it and it's too long, so I'll cut it, braise the ends, tamp it down, and then finish it off with some tape or some shrink wrap or whatever. All right. Uh, would you recommend running 200 watts of clean power to the mid base of the flux by amp it? Passive or will that blow something up there again it's not the power per se that blows the speakers it's the distortion and the clipping and all the crap that comes along with it if you have the greatest signal in the world going to the speaker you're not going to blow it with the power it's all that extra stuff that's going to blow up trust me we've run tons of power to these speakers i mean it's obscene amount of, yeah okay but there again I mean, when we're running a obscene amount of power to a set of speakers, it's zero dB, man, all day long. There's plenty of power going there. I don't need any gain overlap. I don't need anything. It's 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 going to zero do what dB? I want it to do. Uh, once I set the EQ and pull the things down that I need to pull down, then it's I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. So I mean, we've dude, we've taken a the D six twelve hundred and bridged it channel one and two to the left, channel uh, two and th uh, three and four to the right on a set of those. Okay. That's like 250, almost 300 watts going off to a set of flax components. Mm -hmm. um, ooh, yeah, it was loud. Let me tell you what, it, it was stupid loud. But there again, um, very, very clean, very crisp, no distortion, no clipping, gains are down. Rock on. See you, Jason. Uh, how much would you charge to make the adapters for the 8 inch and the Silverado? Ah. Uh, I don't know. I'd have to. It, it's it's one of those weird things. Like they don't clip in, and I would have to. Now see. keep in mind, you have to. Uh, if you're the eight inch, the the magnet is too deep. Yeah. And my head, you uh, the window. So. Yeah, and like when we made them, we made them totally different from Alpine because it's like we had these were loudspeakers that we put in the door, and so we had to shift them a little to the left. Alpine had them shifted a little to the right. They have to center perfect um, because otherwise they won't fit over the pocket and the edge of the door. So it's it's a it's a really tight fit. I know more podcasts. I know my amp seems to be drawing power with the vehicle off. Would that mean bad amp, bad remote wire from Hedgen, or a combination of the two? New Zabco amp, new Kenwood XR double din. Wow, that's not good. Um, I doubt it's the remote turn on coming from the radio. That doesn't seem to make any sense there. Uh, it, okay. The other thing too is it could be the smart module. So the smart module might be staying on as well, meaning that the the brain that talks to the car, if you had to go with the smart module, might might not be turning off entirely or might be drawing more amperage. Obviously, the easiest way to figure it out is to disconnect one thing or the other. So I'd pull the power on the uh, on the amplifier and see if the if like I'm guessing you came out and your battery's dead. Pull the power wire on the amplifier, see what's going on. You can also, if you have a digital multimeter that has the capability of doing amp draw tests, you can test for a parasitic draw, uh, which allows you to you take the the negative terminal off the battery. Put the ohm meter between them two, or digital multimeter between the two. Mm -hmm. Set it to your uh, 10 amp DC current draw, and wait till the car goes to sleep, which usually can take anywhere between 30 seconds to five minutes. Uh, and then you start disconnecting things. So you disconnect the remote turn on wire, disconnect the fuse holder, and see if the amperage draw goes down. So do a Google search on parasitic draw battery test. Center. Center of left, left of center. Yeah. Center, center, or center? <laughs> I like that one. Uh, center, center. 
Would I get best signal for subwoofer from front or rear tab into the 2018 <sighs> Honda Accord? Front. You want the front. Although, it, honestly, in the Honda Accord, it doesn't matter. They're both the same. They don't actively cross over any of those. So if you can tap into the rear deck on that one, you're perfectly fine. It'll do the, it'll do the deal. The, the problem is, is with most cars nowadays, if they have some form of an amplifier or a lot of them have new active stereos in them or the rear and the front don't play the same sounds, uh, and, and when that happens, that's when you run into an issue. Honda really isn't doing that on their non-amplified -amp system. It's the same signal coming out of the front, coming out of the rear. Tap the rear deck, call it a day, good to go. That is one of the nice features of the new Kicker Key Lock, is that it has mm -hmm. the built-in RTA into it. So for 150 bucks, Ooh. you get a built-in RTA, so it'll make sure that you have the signal you're looking for. Uh, each, each light is broken into three parts. So it is from 20 to 200, from 200 to 2,000, 2,000 to 20,000. And the reason why they're broken into those parts is because if it sees that as the sub-signal, anything between 20 and 200, it can fix if it knows what it's looking at. So along with having the RTA built into it, it has the whole de-equalization circuit. So you can put it into any factory system uh, yours included the Honda because your Honda has an 80 hertz roll off. So it, your your roll off starts at about 80 hertz and gradually does this, mm -hmm. and you just have no sound. And it doesn't matter the volume; it, it sucks all the way around. That's why we always put DSPs in those mm -hmm. because they need it. They need it <coughs> badly. There's nothing there. Um, so the 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 key lock will just go in there, flatten that whole mess out, and then allow you to do anything you want. All right, talk about DSPs. Uh, Johnny has an ABH 2550NEX. The equalizer is good, or should I install a separate EQ to better sound? When you say separate EQ, it really, I, I don't know what you mean. If you're talking like one of those I cool was thinking three, something like that. No, those, those okay. will just make your system sound worse because they're noisy, they're typically cheap. Yep. Uh, in the sense that they're like, uh, they're cheap. They're just now, made cheaply. That EQ has nine band EQ. Your or radio seven, has 13. 13, yeah. At least 13. Yes. Unless it's an Alpine, which has nine band parametric. I would definitely which is add it like a, a, a DSP. Yeah, I mean, the the radio, the, the EQ that's in the radio isn't bad. No. It's, they're really nice. I it mean, time that's that's the thing that we've often talked about is yeah. that there's, there's, why, why? Why have the separate EQ? because it's not going to do anything other than the only argument I have for people that want separate EQs is they want to play with it all the time. Yeah. They just like playing with their parts and turning their knobs and dials all the time. In that case, yeah, go for it. There's there's no reason not to. Can but, I use the Kenwood 7-inch and a 2002 Honda Core? Ooh, man, you got to cut. You're going to be cutting. You got to cut. You got to cut a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's not going to be fun. Because I believe that's five and a quarters in the two thousand two, like like how yeah. it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just that's the small adapter. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, you're yeah, gonna be you're yeah. gonna be cutting. Yeah. I, honestly, I don't think it's worth it because the grill isn't that big either. So. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, look at All that. right, guys. That brings us to the end of the show, which means hey, there's a cool couple things we'd like to talk about. Yes. Uh, you can find us on Patreon if you'd like to support the show there. Let's switch over to this guy here. Teespring slash store slash five stars place you can go. If you want to find any of the cool shirts that we have, of course, the holiday weekend just passed. I know Jeff Smith, DNF, Run DNF. You can also get into the cool five star patriotic shirt here, the cool Amon Installer shirt, and of course, the Clean Wire Club, which brings us to the next thing, which is. DNF tool drawer. So if you guys want to pick up cool tools that we use, this is the place to do it. You can find power tools, probes, meters and probes are one of my favorite sections. This is where all the cool stuff is. And then down here in the bottom are where your test tracks are. So we often talk about polarity pops, pink noise. You can find them all right here. And then MTI acoustics, don't forget to get your 20% discount, type in say 20% and that will allow you to get a discount when you check out. And then, what was I looking for? Yeah, that's it. Oh, Facebook, Clean Wire Club. Become a member of the 12 volt Clean Wire Club, people. And then if you do some clean wiring like this one, you get to be at the top of the page. Remember though, if your wiring isn't clean, 
gonna go. It's gonna go bye bye. I don't even know why we got pictures of fans. Really? Is someone asking a question about fans? But here you go. See, this is some before and after weird stuff going on here. Yeah, I'd rather to just you guys if you guys can put the pictures of after, not before. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. just like just put the after. That would be cool. But there you go. That, the, that that's got some nice RCAs there. Oh, yeah, wow. that looks better. Deck, huh? Rear deck. Yeah, ooh, lots of fun. Dang, ooh. that was a pain. I'll give you props there. Good job. That's a lot of work. All right. But anyways. And that's some fun. That's it. That's it for the week. That means uh, we have a show Saturday. Yeah. Because we'll still be here. Mm -hmm. And then that's that's it. That's it for the week. But if you want to find us during the week and ask more questions, because why not, you can find us on Instagram. You can find us at 5 Star, the number 5 Star Car Stereo. We're there almost every day with the 5 Minutes with 5 Star, which is not 5 Minutes, but it is with us. And we tend to show you what's going on with the day, and we'll answer some questions if we have time. So it's a lot yeah. of fun. And with that, you guys have a wonderful week. We'll see you next week. Bye. We'll see you Saturday. Oh, yeah, Bye. Saturday. Whatever. Bye. It's right there.